Commander John Harris stood at the helm of the United Earth Space Force vessel UES Vanguard, a ship that epitomized human engineering ingenuity. It wasn't the largest nor the most powerful in the fleet, but it was agile and reliable. Harris was a seasoned officer, his career spanning over two decades of service, marked by both distinguished valor and strategic acumen. Today, he felt the familiar surge of responsibility as he surveyed his crew, a diverse group of individuals united under the common cause of space exploration and defense. The command deck buzzed with activity. Officers monitored their stations, their eyes occasionally flicking to the large digital maps and data screens that showed a live feed of space around them. The environment was a blend of tense anticipation and routine checks. Harris's voice broke the monotony, clear and commanding, as he initiated a status check. Report Lieutenant Mardson. Lieutenant Amy Mardson, the ship's navigation officer, responded promptly. All systems operational, Commander. We're on course and no immediate threats are detected in our vicinity. Good. Keep monitoring any signal anomalies. We can't afford surprises, Harris instructed, his gaze returning to the vast expanse of stars displayed before them. The serenity of their journey was abruptly interrupted by an urgent distress signal, a code red that demanded immediate attention. The signal originated from a remote mining colony at the edge of the Orion Nebula. Such colonies were often understaffed and underprotected, making them vulnerable to space pirates and aggressive alien species. Commander, we've received a distress signal from the Orion Nebula mining colony. It's marked as urgent, announced communications officer Kyle Brent, his tone conveying the seriousness of the situation. Harris's expression hardened as he processed the news. He swiftly made his way over to the communications station, where Officer Brent was already pulling up additional data about the colony's last transmitted status reports. Details, Officer Brent. What are we looking at? Harris asked, his voice steady, despite the urgency. The colony sent out a final message indicating they were under attack. The transmission was cut off abruptly. There's no further information on the attacker's identity or the scale of the assault, Brent reported his fingers moving quickly over the console to enhance the audio playback of the distress call. Harris listened intently to the fractured sounds of chaos captured in the recording. His decision was immediate, reflecting years of experience in crisis situations. Set a direct course to the Orion Nebula, maximum speed. Alert the crew to prepare for potential combat. I want every department on high alert, he commanded. The crew responded with swift efficiency accustomed to their commander's decisive leadership. As the UES Vanguard adjusted its trajectory and sped towards the colony, Harris thought about the potential scenarios they might encounter. His mind strategized on various approaches, planning for both best and worst case outcomes. Mardson, time to arrival? Harris queried, turning back to the navigation console. Approximately three hours at current speed, Commander, Mardson replied, her eyes not leaving the navigational data. Harris nodded and then addressed the whole crew, his voice broadcast throughout the ship. This is Commander Harris. We are responding to a distress call from the Orion Nebula mining colony. I want every team ready and every weapon system checked. We don't know what's out there, but I need everyone sharp and prepared. We have lives to save, and I'm counting on each of you to perform at your best. The crew's response was a unified effort to ramp up preparations. Harris watched them proud of their professionalism but weighed down by the knowledge that every decision he made now could mean the difference between life and death for those at the colony. As the UES vanguard surged forward through the cosmos, Commander John Harris braced himself for what lay ahead, ready to lead his crew into the unknown, fully aware that the challenges they would face could reshape their understanding of their place in the universe. As the UES vanguard neared the Orion Nebula, the ambient light from the nebula cast a soft glow across the command deck. Commander John Harris remained focused, his eyes fixed on the forward screens displaying the mining colony's coordinates. The silence of the deck was a stark contrast to the usual hum of routine operations, reflecting the crew's tension as they approached the distressed outpost. Visuals coming online, Commander, announced the sensor operator, Sergeant Clara Rodriguez. She adjusted the feed, bringing the mining colony into view. The image that materialized on the main screen was stark and foreboding, a series of structures, some visibly damaged, 
illuminated only by emergency lighting. Zoom in on Sector 4. That's where their main distress beacon is located, Harris ordered, pointing to a particular cluster of buildings that appeared more battered than others. Rodriguez complied, and the details became clearer. The structures showed signs of recent conflict, scorched walls, shattered windows, and debris scattered around the periphery. No signs of movement were visible from their current vantage point. Damage analysis, Harris called out. Lieutenant Mardson quickly accessed the colony's architectural database, overlaying images of the structures before the attack with their current state. Multiple external breaches. The power core seems intact, but the life support systems are operating at minimal capacity. It's not good, Commander. If there are survivors, they might be without adequate oxygen or heat. Harris nodded, his jaw tightening. Prepare for landing. We'll set down near the command center. Rodriguez, keep scanning for bio signs. We need to know if we're walking into a trap. Yes, Commander, Rodriguez replied, her fingers moving deftly over her console. Detecting faint bio signals. It's patchy, but there are definitely survivors. The vanguard descended towards the colony, its thrusters kicking up moon dust as it landed. The moment the ship touched down, Harris was the first to disembark, flanked by a security team armed and ready for engagement. The environment was eerily silent, the only sounds being the hiss of their suits and the crunch of their boots on the gravel. Fan out. Secure a perimeter and check for survivors. I want updates every two minutes, Harris instructed his team, his voice calm yet authoritative over the comms. The team acknowledged and split into groups, moving swiftly towards the designated areas. Harris walked towards the command center, his eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of the attackers or additional threats. The door to the command center was ajar, hanging off its hinges. Inside, the scene was grim. Console lights flickered sporadically, illuminating the faces of the fallen colony staff. Harris moved through the room, checking for any signs of life. In the corner of the room, he found a lone survivor, a young technician huddled under a desk. It's okay. I'm Commander John Harris of the UES Vanguard. You're safe now. Can you tell me what happened here? Harris said gently, kneeling beside the technician. The man looked up, his face pale and streaked with dirt. They came out of nowhere, overwhelmed our defenses. I... I don't know where everyone else is. We'll find them, Harris assured him, activating his comm. Medical team, I need you in the command center immediately. I have a survivor. As Harris escorted the technician outside, his team reported in. Area secured, Commander. No hostiles detected. We found a few more survivors. Medics are attending. Good work. Keep searching. There may be more out there. And stay alert for any possible threats, Harris responded, looking back at the bleak landscape. The rescue operation continued with each team methodically searching the colony. Harris coordinated the efforts, ensuring that every survivor was accounted for and that the area remained secure. As the last of the survivors were brought to the vanguard for medical treatment, Harris stood looking over the damaged colony, his mind already calculating the next steps in their response. It was clear that whoever attacked this colony was powerful and potentially still a threat. Shortly after the rescue operation at the Orion Nebula colony, Commander John Harris and his team detected a new threat on the horizon. The sensors aboard the UES Vanguard had picked up incoming spacecraft, fast approaching their position. The shapes and signatures matched no known friendly crafts, and the likelihood that they were hostile was high. Harris, standing firmly on the command deck, prepared his crew for the imminent confrontation. Status report on incoming vessels, Harris demanded, his tone serious yet composed as he faced Sergeant Rodriguez, who was monitoring the sensors. Three ships, Commander. Confirmed as Narath-class fighters. They're armed and closing in rapidly, Rodriguez reported, her voice steady despite the rising tension. Communications. Open a channel. Let's see if they're open to dialogue, Harris instructed, though his experience told him that the chances of a peaceful resolution were slim. Officer Brent attempted to establish communication but was met only with static and silence. It was clear the Narath were not interested in talking. Harris's strategic mind kicked into gear. Battle stations, everyone, prepare to engage. Defense patterns Delta and Gamma, let's use the Nebula's dust cloud to our advantage. The crew of the Vanguard sprang into action, 
the ship's defense systems powering up as they maneuvered towards the densest part of the Orion Nebula. The cloud of cosmic dust and gas could potentially disrupt the Narath's targeting systems, giving the humans a necessary edge. Bring all weapons online, shields to maximum. Let's show them what this ship is capable of, Harris ordered, watching the three Narath ships draw nearer. Each was sleek and menacing, designed for both speed and firepower. As the Narath ships entered firing range, a barrage of energy pulses came hurtling towards the vanguard. The ship shook as its shields absorbed the impact. Harris remained calm, issuing commands. Return fire! Target their propulsion systems! Aim to disable, not destroy! He directed, hoping to end the conflict with minimal damage on both sides. Lieutenant Mardson, responsible for the ship's weaponry, coordinated the counterattack. The vanguard's guns lit up, sending precise volleys of return fire towards the Narath fighters. The battle was intense, with both sides exchanging heavy fire, but the strategic use of the nebula's cover allowed the vanguard to evade the deadliest assaults. During the skirmish, Harris observed the Narath's tactics, noting their reliance on overwhelming firepower and less on strategic maneuvers. Rodriguez, keep us in the nebula, make it hard for them to get a clear shot, he said his voice calm but authoritative. Commander, one Narath fighter is falling back. Looks like they've sustained damage to their engines, Rodriguez updated, a trace of relief in her tone. Focus on the remaining two, let's push them to retreat, Harris responded. Under his command, the crew of the vanguard continued their disciplined volley of defensive and offensive maneuvers. The battle continued for several tense minutes, with the vanguard skillfully using the nebula's properties to disrupt the Narath targeting systems. Finally, the remaining Narath fighters, recognizing their disadvantaged position, began to pull back, retreating from the battlefield. Harris stood firm, watching as the enemy ships disappeared from their sensors. Cease fire. Maintain alert status and monitor their retreat path. They may try to regroup and attack again, he cautioned, always thinking one step ahead. As the immediate threat waned, Harris addressed his crew. Well done, everyone. You handled yourselves well. Let's get damage reports and tend to any necessary repairs. Stay vigilant. This may not be over. The crew's response was a mix of relief and renewed focus, as they set about following their commander's orders, assessing the ship for any damages, and preparing for any further encounters. Harris took a moment to reflect on the engagement. The successful defense against the Narath attack reaffirmed his belief in his crew's capabilities and the importance of tactical ingenuity in space combat. The engagement with the Narath forces was a stark reminder of the dangers lurking in uncharted space, reinforcing the need for readiness at all times. Harris knew that this skirmish was likely only a precursor to larger conflicts looming on the horizon. After the skirmish with the Narath forces, Commander John Harris knew that the threat was far from over. The preliminary victory had bought them some time, but the Narath would likely return, possibly in greater numbers. With the mining colony still vulnerable and the UES Vanguard's resources stretched, Harris decided that calling for external support was necessary. The Galactic Council, despite its aloofness towards humans, was the most logical option for assistance. Officer Brent, open a secure line to the Galactic Council. Use the emergency diplomatic channel, Harris instructed, his voice embodying the gravity of the situation. Yes, Commander, Brent replied, his fingers moving swiftly over the communications panel to establish the connection. After a few moments of silence and static, the line cleared, and the emblem of the Galactic Council appeared on the screen. This is Commander John Harris of the UES Vanguard, requesting immediate assistance under the galactic distress measures. We are facing repeated attacks from Narath forces at the Orion Nebula colony, Harris began, his tone formal yet urgent. The response from the council was delayed, the screen flickering slightly before a figure appeared. It was a counselor, whose indifferent expression did little to mask the bureaucracy's typical aloofness. Commander Harris, we acknowledge your situation. However, the Council is currently deliberating on multiple crises across the sectors. Can you manage the situation until a decision is reached? The Counselor's voice was dispassionate, his words slow and measured. Harris frowned slightly, 
The response was as he expected, yet it was still frustrating. With all due respect, we need immediate reinforcements. The Narath pose a significant threat not just to us, but potentially to neighboring sectors as well. Delaying assistance could result in greater destabilization, Harris argued, trying to convey the urgency without sounding desperate. The counselor paused, his eyes narrowing slightly as if weighing the situation, or perhaps calculating the political cost. Your request will be taken into consideration. We will notify you once the council reaches a decision. Until then, maintain your position and keep us updated on any developments. The line went dead, leaving Harris staring at a blank screen. The lack of commitment from the Galactic Council was disheartening, but not surprising. He turned to face his crew, who had been silently monitoring the exchange. We're on our own for now, Harris announced, his voice firm. Prepare for extended defensive operations. I want every system checked and every weapon ready. We'll need to be self-sufficient until help arrives, if it arrives. Lieutenant Mardson nodded. I'll coordinate with engineering to optimize our energy usage. We'll make sure we're as prepared as possible. And I'll boost our surveillance scans, see if we can spot them before they make another move, added Sergeant Rodriguez, her tone determined. Harris nodded in approval, grateful for his crew's professionalism. Good. Also, let's start working on evacuation plans for the colony. If the Narath return before we receive any support, we might need to get everyone off the surface. As the crew dispersed to carry out their orders, Harris remained at the command deck, watching the stars beyond. The situation was precarious, and the lack of support from the Galactic Council was a significant blow. However, he was not the type to dwell on disappointment. The safety of his crew and the colonists was his responsibility, and he would do everything in his power to protect them, with or without the Council's help. His resolve solidified, Harris continued to strategize, planning for every possible scenario. The upcoming hours, or possibly days, would test the limits of their capabilities, but he was ready to lead his crew through whatever challenges came next. Following the Galactic Council's non-committal response, Commander John Harris recognized the urgent need to develop an independent strategy to protect the Orion Nebula colony from further Narath attacks. The Vanguard was equipped for conflict, but a sustained offensive from the Narath could overwhelm their limited resources. Harris convened a meeting with his senior officers to brainstorm a robust defensive plan. In the ship's strategy room, the mood was somber yet focused as Harris outlined the current situation. The Council isn't moving fast enough. We need a contingency plan that doesn't rely on their reinforcements. Ideas? Lieutenant Mardson, the weapons officer, was the first to speak. We could deploy proximity mines around the colony's perimeter. It won't stop them, but it will slow any approaching ships, giving us more time to respond. Sergeant Rodriguez, the sensor and communications expert, added, Enhancing our surveillance network could help. If we integrate the colony's sensor arrays with the Vanguard systems, we can create a more comprehensive detection grid. It might give us the upper hand in monitoring Narath movements. Harris nodded thoughtfully. Both good points. Let's expand on that. If we're going to hold off the Narath, we need to maximize every advantage we have. The engineering officer, Chief Warrant Officer Jenna Hargreaves, then suggested, What about using the nebula itself? Last engagement, it interfered with their targeting systems. We could modify some drones to mimic our energy signatures and lead them into denser parts of the nebula. That's an excellent idea, Hargreaves. Let's develop that. Use the nebula's properties against them, Harris approved, appreciating the innovative approach. As the meeting continued, strategies were refined and responsibilities assigned. Harris emphasized the need for efficiency and precision. I want every detail checked and double-checked. This plan doesn't just need to work. It needs to work flawlessly. Once the meeting concluded, Harris stayed back to discuss the logistics with Mardson. Make sure the armaments are prepared without cutting too much into our reserve power. We can't afford to be caught off guard. Yes, Commander. I'll oversee the installations personally and coordinate with Hargreaves on setting up the drones, Mardson assured him. And Rodriguez... Keep the communications line open with the colony. They need to be informed about every step of this plan. It's their lives we're protecting, Harris added, turning to the communications officer. Understood, Commander. I'll make sure they're updated and try to boost morale down there. 
They need to know we're fighting for them, Rodriguez responded, understanding the importance of keeping the colonists engaged and cooperative. Over the next several hours, the vanguard was a flurry of activity. Teams worked diligently to implement the new defensive strategies. Mines were strategically placed, drones were modified and deployed, and sensor networks were enhanced. Harris supervised the operations, offering guidance and support where needed. By the end of the day, the colony was encircled by a network of defensive measures that utilized both technology and the natural environment of the nebula. Harris reviewed the setup with his officers, feeling a cautious optimism. We've done everything we can to prepare. Now, we need to stay alert and respond swiftly to any threat. Keep monitoring the sensors and be ready to adjust our tactics on the fly. The crew acknowledged, impressed by Harris's leadership and the comprehensive plan they had put into place. As the lights of the colony shone against the backdrop of the nebula, there was a sense of solidarity and determination among the crew. They were ready to defend their charge, no matter what challenges awaited them. Harris ended the day with a final inspection of the command deck, feeling prepared yet vigilant. The Narath were a formidable enemy, but he believed deeply in his crew's ability and the strength of their newly forged defenses. The next encounter would be the true test of their resolve and ingenuity. With the defensive systems in place around the colony, Commander John Harris turned his attention to a more aggressive strategy to ensure the safety of the Orion Nebula colony. After much deliberation, he decided that a direct sabotage mission against the Narath mothership could disrupt their operations long enough for the Galactic Council to take notice and act. The preparation for such a mission required precision, stealth, and a willingness from the crew to undertake significant risks. Harris convened a select group of his crew, chosen for their specialized skills and previous combat experience, in the strategy room aboard the UES Vanguard. The atmosphere was tense, as the gravity of the mission was not lost on anyone present. We have a narrow window of opportunity to strike at the heart of the Narath fleet, Harris began, addressing the assembled team. Our objective is to infiltrate their mothership, plant high-yield explosives at critical junctures, and exit before detection. This will cripple their operational capabilities and give us the upper hand. Lieutenant Mardson, tasked with the logistics of the armaments, added, I've prepared the explosives. They're compact but powerful enough to take out their main reactors. We'll also equip you with the latest stealth tech to avoid detection. Sergeant Rodriguez, who would be part of the infiltration team, spoke up. What's our insertion strategy, Commander? We need a solid exfil plan, too. Getting in might be easier than getting out. Harris nodded, acknowledging the concern. We've managed to capture a small Narath scout ship from their last raid. It's been modified to mask its origin. We'll use it to approach the mothership undetected. As for extraction, we'll have the Vanguard on standby, ready to create a diversion and extract you at high speed once the mission is complete. Chief Warrant Officer Hargreaves, responsible for technological preparations, chimed in. I've programmed the scout ship's transponders with Narath signatures. It should pass as one of their own. We've also loaded it with a remote override, so if anything goes wrong, we can cause it to self-destruct. Let's talk timing. We need to synchronize our watches and make sure everyone knows the plan down to the second, Mardson said, pulling up a digital timer. The team spent the next hour going through every detail of the mission, from the path of approach and specific targets within the mothership to the timing of each phase of the operation. Harris made sure to emphasize the importance of communication. Keep your comms live and encrypted. Report in every 10 minutes. If you go dark, we'll initiate emergency protocols, Harris instructed firmly. Rodriguez, feeling the weight of the responsibility, reassured him. We won't let you down, Commander. We know what's at stake. As the meeting concluded, the team members collected their gear, including specialized spacesuits and weaponry. Each member of the team checked their equipment meticulously, triple-checking every seal and setting on their suits and packs. Harris stood by the docking bay as the team prepared to board the captured Narath scout ship. He clapped each of them on the shoulder as they passed, a silent show of support and confidence. Remember, you're not just fighting for the colony, but for the future of human presence in this sector. Be swift, be silent, and above all, be safe.
With a final nod from Rodriguez, the team boarded the ship and the hatch sealed behind them. Harris watched from the viewport as the scout ship detached from the vanguard and drifted into the cosmic shadows of the nebula, beginning its silent journey towards the Narath mothership. Back on the command deck, Harris settled in to monitor the mission's progress. Surrounded by screens displaying various data points and the live feed from the team's helmet cams. The next few hours would determine the fate of their stand against the Narath, and Harris felt the burden of command more than ever as he waited for the first check in call. Commander John Harris kept a vigilant eye on the mission's progress from the UES Vanguard. Every minute was critical, and the tension aboard the ship was palpable. As he monitored the team's advance towards the Narath mothership, an unexpected alarm sounded on the bridge. Harris immediately turned towards the source of the alert. Sergeant Rodriguez, report! What triggered the alarm? Harris demanded, his focus shifting from the mission to the immediate issue on the vanguard. It's the security protocol, sir. The system has detected an unauthorized access to the navigation controls, Rodriguez responded, her voice tense as she navigated through the security feeds. Harris's mind raced as he considered the implications. Isolate the terminal. I want to know who's behind this now, he ordered, his tone sharp. Rodriguez worked quickly, her fingers flying over the controls. Within seconds, the culprit was revealed on the main screen. It was the Galactic Council Observer, a diplomat who had been assigned to monitor the Vanguard's operations to ensure compliance with interstellar law. The Observer's actions were clearly beyond his remit. Bring him here. Now! Harris commanded, his jaw set firmly. Two security officers immediately departed to retrieve the Observer. Minutes later, the Observer was brought onto the bridge under guard. His expression was defiant, not showing any signs of regret or fear. Explain yourself. Why are you interfering with my ship's operations during a critical mission? Harris stood imposingly before the Observer, his demeanor unyielding. The Observer met Harris's gaze, his voice steady. Commander... I must prevent you from escalating this conflict. The Council believes your actions could provoke a wider war with the Narath that we are not prepared to engage in. You overstep your boundaries by compromising my ship. You've endangered my crew and the entire colony we're trying to protect, Harris retorted, his anger barely contained. The Observer's response was cold. My orders were clear. If it appeared that your actions would bring irreparable harm to Council interests, I was to intervene. Harris realized the gravity of the situation. Not only were they dealing with a formidable external enemy, but now they also faced betrayal from within. He needed to regain control immediately. Lock him in the brig. He is not to access any systems or communicate with the council until I decide otherwise, Harris ordered the guards, who promptly escorted the observer away. Turning back to the mission, Harris contacted Rodriguez. Secure all systems. I want manual overrides on everything the Observer had access to, and keep monitoring the team's progress. We can't have any more surprises. Yes, sir, I'll make sure of it, Rodriguez assured him, quickly setting to work on reinforcing the security measures. With the immediate threat contained, Harris refocused on the sabotage mission. Despite the setback, the team was making progress, but the betrayal had shaken him. He knew that every decision now carried even more weight, not just for the success of the mission, but for the future trust and security of their operations. As he watched the live feed from the team approaching the Narath mothership, Harris felt a renewed sense of determination. The betrayal had clarified the stakes. They were truly on their own, and failure was not an option. He would need to navigate not only the external threats, but also the internal politics that sought to undermine their efforts. With a deep breath, Harris steadied himself, the next few hours would be crucial. He was ready to make tough decisions to ensure the safety of his crew and the success of their mission, no matter the obstacles. In the wake of the betrayal by the Galactic Council Observer, Commander John Harris was even more determined to ensure the safety and independence of his mission. The realization that the Vanguard and its crew could only rely on themselves was now clearer than ever. However, an unexpected communication soon offered a new perspective and potential ally. While reviewing the security protocols that Sergeant Rodriguez had tightened, an unfamiliar signal intercepted their standard communications channel. Harris, 
wary of another potential threat, instructed Rodriguez to trace and secure the source before opening the line. Sir, the source is encrypted, but it doesn't match Narath or known council signatures. It appears to be another alien faction, unknown but seemingly urgent, Rodriguez reported, her eyes locked on the data streaming across her screen. Let's hear what they have to say, Harris decided, his curiosity piqued by the possibility of a new variable in their strained equation. Rodriguez nodded and activated the communication channel. A voice, clear and distinctly non-human, filled the command deck. Commander Harris of the UES Vanguard, I am Leora, speaking for the Solari Confederacy. We have been monitoring your conflict with the Narath and find ourselves in a similar position. We propose a meeting to discuss a potential alliance. Harris was cautious but understood the strategic importance of this new development. Leora, we are open to discussions. However, given our current situation, any alliance must be based on mutual respect and transparency. Can we meet to discuss this further? Yes, Commander. We propose a neutral location within the Dalara asteroid belt. It's outside Narath surveillance zones. We can guarantee safety and privacy for the negotiations, Leora responded. After a brief consultation with his senior officers, Harris agreed. We will meet you there. Provide us with the coordinates. The coordinates were quickly exchanged, and preparations began for the meeting. Harris knew that forming an alliance with the Solari could significantly shift the balance of power. It could provide them with the additional support needed to withstand Narath aggressions and possibly pressure the Galactic Council to reconsider their stance. Upon arriving at the designated meeting point, Harris led a small delegation aboard a shuttle to the Solari vessel, a sleek and intricately designed ship that spoke of a highly advanced civilization. The Solari, it turned out, were humanoid, but with distinct features that shimmered with a subtle luminescence under their skin. Leora greeted Harris and his team warmly. Welcome, Commander Harris. We are pleased to make your acquaintance under these trying circumstances. The discussions that followed were earnest and focused. Leora explained that the Solari had faced repeated incursions on their territory by Narath forces, and their attempts to seek help had been similarly dismissed by the Galactic Council. As you have probably experienced, the Council is reluctant to act decisively against the Narath. We believe that by forming an alliance, we can protect our respective spaces more effectively and present a united front that the Council cannot ignore, Leora proposed. Harris listened intently weighing each word. Our primary goal is to protect the Orion Nebula colony and ensure the safety of human and now, potentially, Solari interests. Your proposal aligns with our objectives. What do you envision this alliance looking like? Leora outlined a plan for shared intelligence and military resources, joint training exercises, and combined strategic defenses. Together, we can enhance our surveillance and combat capabilities. Our technologies complement each other, and our united front could deter further Narath aggression. Convinced of the benefits and the sincerity of the Solari, Harris agreed. Let's move forward, Leora. Together we can ensure the safety of our people and perhaps influence the Galactic Council to take a more active role in maintaining stability in this region. The meeting concluded with formal agreements signed and a mutual promise to support one another against external threats. As Harris returned to the vanguard, he felt a renewed sense of hope. With the Solari at their side, they were no longer alone in their struggle, and the path forward seemed a little less daunting. With the newly formed alliance between the humans of the UES vanguard and the Solari Confederacy, Commander John Harris felt a significant boost in morale and tactical capabilities. The stage was set for a definitive confrontation with the Narath forces that had escalated their attacks on the Orion Nebula colony. Now, with the support of the Solari, the Vanguard was not only defending, but also taking the fight to the enemy. As the Narath began to amass a larger fleet near the colony, signaling an impending major assault, Harris and Leora, the Solari representative, coordinated their strategy. The plan was to engage the Narath fleet in a multi-pronged attack, utilizing both human and Solari technology and tactics to exploit the Narath's known weaknesses. Leora, are your ships in position? 
Harris asked through the secure communication link established between their two flagships. Yes, Commander. We are ready to initiate the attack on your command. Our ion disruptors are charged and ready to disable their shields, Leora confirmed, her voice calm yet assertive. Very well. Let's begin. All units advance and engage at will. Remember, keep them disoriented. Hit and run, Harris ordered, his gaze fixed on the tactical display that showed the positions of both friendly and hostile forces. The battle commenced with the vanguard leading the charge, its cannons firing bursts of high-energy plasma. Solari ships, sleek and agile, flanked the Narath fleet, unleashing a barrage of ion disruptors that effectively weakened the Narath shields. As the Narath returned fire, their salvos were less effective than usual. The combined human and Solari forces were smaller and more maneuverable, making them harder targets to hit. The Narath, used to relying on sheer firepower, found themselves struggling to adapt to the hit-and-run tactics employed by Harris and Leora. Keep pressing them. Target their main artillery units, Harris directed, monitoring the battle's progress. His crew worked with precision, coordinating their moves with the Solari to maximize the impact of their joint offensive. Sergeant Rodriguez, now in charge of tactical maneuvers, updated Harris continuously. Commander, we've successfully taken out three of their main cruisers. The Solari disruptors are working effectively. Good. Let's tighten the net. All units, concentrate fire on their flagship. Leora, can you bring your ships around for a flanking maneuver? Harris communicated, strategizing on the fly. Executing now, Commander. We'll have them in a crossfire within minutes, Leora responded, her voice tinged with determination. As the battle raged on, the Narath fleet began to falter under the relentless assault. The Vanguard and Solari ships managed to outmaneuver and significantly damage the Narath flagship, causing chaos within their ranks. Sensing the turning tide, Harris pushed his crew for one final push. This is it! Focus all firepower on their command ship, disable it, and the rest will retreat! Harris commanded, his voice resonant over the ship's comms. With a concerted effort, the combined firepower of the Vanguard and the Silari vessels targeted the Narath command ship. A final, decisive volley of plasma and ion blasts struck the Narath flagship, crippling its engines and weapon systems. As the smoke and debris cleared, the Narath fleet, now leaderless and in disarray, began to retreat. Cheers broke out among the crew of the Vanguard and were echoed by the Solari over the communications channel. We did it, Leora. Thank you. Your forces turned the tide, Harris said a rare smile breaking through his usually stoic demeanor. Together we achieved victory, Commander. This is just the beginning of what our alliance can accomplish, Leora replied, her tone warm with mutual respect. With the threat to the Orion Nebula colony repelled, Harris knew that this victory was a significant step towards securing the region. However, the broader implications of their success were yet to be fully realized. For now, the crew of the Vanguard and their Solari allies could take a moment to celebrate their hard-fought victory. Following their decisive victory over the Narath, Commander John Harris and the crew of the UES Vanguard, alongside their new allies from the Solari Confederacy, were due for recognition. The impact of their joint operation had extended beyond the immediate tactical success. It had potential repercussions for the political landscape within the Galactic Council. After the battle, as repairs were made and the crew took a well-deserved rest, preparations began for a formal debriefing with the Galactic Council. The Council, previously non-committal, had now expressed a keen interest in the outcome of the conflict, particularly in light of the unexpected alliance between humanity and the Solari. Commander Harris, the Council is ready for your report, Lieutenant Mardson informed him, her voice cutting through the quiet hum of the command deck. Thank you, Lieutenant. Establish the communication link, Harris responded, straightening his uniform as he prepared to address the council. The screen flickered to life, revealing the assembly of various species that comprised the Galactic Council. Harris began his debriefing with a clear, firm tone. Esteemed members of the council, as you are aware, the recent conflict at the Orion Nebula was brought to a successful conclusion through the combined efforts of the United Earth Space Force and the Silari Confederacy. He continued, detailing the tactical decisions 
and the critical role played by the Solari technology and intelligence. This alliance not only turned the tide against the Narath, but also demonstrated a formidable partnership that could benefit the Council's strategic interests, Harris explained. The Council listened intently, their earlier indifference replaced by a more contemplative demeanor. One of the senior counselors, a representative from a species known for their diplomatic influence, addressed Harris. Commander, your actions and this new alliance you've formed have implications far beyond your local sector. We are impressed by your initiative and success. Another counselor chimed in. Indeed, the council is reconsidering its stance on human participation. Your cooperation with the Solari opens new avenues for policy and security measures. Harris acknowledged their comments with a nod. We believe that a more integrated approach to galactic security will benefit all. The human and Solari fleets stand ready to contribute further to Council operations. As the meeting concluded, the Council agreed to initiate talks for a formal treaty between the Galactic Council, Earth, and the Solari Confederacy, marking a significant shift in interstellar relations. The crew of the Vanguard was formally commended, and the Solari were invited to participate in future Council sessions. Back on the Vanguard, Harris met with Leora to discuss the implications of their newfound status. This could be the beginning of a new era for both our people, he said, genuine optimism in his voice. Leora nodded, her expression thoughtful. Indeed, Commander. Today we have laid the groundwork for a partnership that could reshape our galaxy. We are grateful for your trust and camaraderie. As news of the Council's recognition spread throughout the ship and to the colony below, a collective sense of pride and accomplishment filled the air. Harris stood on the command deck, looking out at the stars, contemplating the future. With the Solari by their side and a potential seat at the Council, humanity was no longer on the fringes of galactic politics, but at the forefront of a new diplomatic and military alliance. This recognition was not just a diplomatic victory, but a promise of new beginnings for humanity's role in the galaxy fostering hopes for a more inclusive and united interstellar community.